Good evening, this is Nick Inman from VolumeProfileTrader.com on Sunday, May 20th. And looking at the S&P here, uh, first things first, I'm going to say, I would, well, you have to look at the 200-day moving average, 1278. But I'm going to say that uh, the market's probably going to find some type of support, and I have the Fib Fibonacci's on, but that's not my point. Uh, 1263, uh, that's kind of what I'm looking for uh, with the market, just to show you the Fibonacci's from 1068 up to 420 uh, the 50 percent retracements 1245 or so uh, 38.2 uh, is around 1286 uh, basically current levels so we're coming into a, a relatively healthy pullback zone if for the Fibonacci watchers and I've I haven't I don't do a lot of work with them uh, but I am aware of them and that's really it uh, but overall, I'm, I'm really looking at 1262 or so uh, for the potential for any type of uh, significant bounce in the S&P. So really, that's another 25, 30 points or so. And, uh, you know, I, but I continue to say, and you know, even back to, let's see what day it was, uh, the 16th, I was saying, you know, looking for some type of bounce when we don't get it and it just flushes harder than the prior three days, what is that telling you? It's telling you that the market, you know, the sellers are dominating. And, you know, despite the fact that the market goes up and down, uh, it's going down and continues to go down, which is telling you, and take notes on this, it's telling you it's a bigger time frame move. I know that sounds like, okay, thanks for the obvious, but if you think about it in, ter you know, in terms Sure, the volatility is up, but that does that really matter versus, you know, the fact that, you know, the market should bounce at certain levels. An example would be 13, uh, 13 or so, but when it bounces for 10 points and then reverses and continues down, that's showing you that the big time frame players aren't yet, aren't done selling yet. And, you know, that that's basically the point. Um, so you're looking on a bigger time frame, and I'm talking about this whole chart here, you're looking at the bigger time frame of 1263 as the first support, the first major support. Um, and I would just be noteworthy of the 200-day around this 1277 level, um, just because there could be enough buyers lurking there that could stop uh, the S&P and the, its tracks and not get down to 1263. But I would kind of consider that your your range. Um, so just just my overall thought. And I guess one other thing to point out, is 1260 it's actually 1264 so uh, that's the very top of this high volume and technically speaking it could be any level within here however I look at the 12 uh, let's say 1243 or so um, that's some pretty significant volume there uh, I would be um, less you know I would kinda give it wiggle room until those levels uh, for a potential long but um, overall, you know, it's hard to not side with the sellers for right now and, you know, kind of go from there. Now, if we get any type of news that's, that warrants some type of short covering or market reversal, you know, then it, it's obvious that uh, this analysis doesn't go to waste, but um, it's less valid because something significant maybe changes the market's opinion. Uh, so just, just pointing that out. Uh, the Dow, uh, with all these lines, I don't even know why they're here. Uh, definitely looks like a topping pattern, that's for sure. But coming down to potential support, you see the bottom of this high volume. Let me get the right tool. Uh, current levels trading at. We also have more around 12,160, 12, basically a 200-day moving average. Um, those are two levels I'd be looking for. Uh, as far as support. NASDAQ continues lower 200 day moving average here it comes and I still NASDAQ is the only uh, name that still gives me a uh, buy on weakness sort of mentality the reason why point of control is still way down here which shows you the this range uh, has more volume than this range up here and uh, that's something to be noteworthy of Just to look at the VIX really quick, 
uh, breaking, well, at the 200-day moving average, uh, at the 25 level, kind of a psychological level. We'll see uh, what happens, but the 50% retracement since the October 4th lows uh, would be around 30. So maybe that's a potential target. Gold got our pullback against the uh, double top, um, and the euro got a nice bounce against this double bottom. So one other thing to look at, gold futures uh, continues its ride higher. Silver futures continues its uh, ride higher. Uh, let's see, to check other currencies. Uh, the Australian dollar down at, you know, I guess you could say a potential support level. Canadian dollar uh, value area low here. Uh, kind of look for some type of bounce. The Japanese yen uh, continues to power higher, so that's, you know, that's we know which way that's going for now. Uh, I'd be actually looking uh, for higher prices in the yen, just just based off of, you know, looking at this and the current momentum it has. Uh, so that's enough of that. Let's see, uh, how about some oil? This is bouncing territory. One thing is, when oil comes down, you have to think uh, people are looking for, basically, that that's almost like a tax cut for them. Uh, so when gas comes down, obviously, people pay less at the pump. They have a little more disposable income. Uh, that should, you know, warrant some type of floor. If you think about this logically, which obviously isn't always the right way to think about it, um, as oil comes down, if we are in a recovery, the markets uh, should start anticipating better sales for consumer discretionary names. Uh, an example would be a Starbucks of uh, around $50, $48. That's probably somewhere worth looking at getting involved. Uh, let's like a Target, something like that. Uh, and I'm just pointing out some obvious names, but you, you look for some type of turnaround because if they operate good or if they operate well on you know when the gas is high imagine what they do when gas is lower obviously their profits go up so that's that's worth being priced in you know in the stock as uh, you know gas prices come down uh, so oil it's probably in bounce territory value area low got there Friday um, we'll see if it bounces off those levels and copper a uh, value very low also so you look for some type of bounce here um, now whether you sell into this bounce is uh, you know it's kinda hard to tell now but um, you know it, there will be there for an opportunity and hopefully you know we can make money off of it as for you know the people that are trading intraday well first I guess we can point out this uh, Facebook Okay, Facebook, for those who wanted their trade, I took it, I mean, I took it today personally. It was a $2 profit. Um, glad I took it. You know, I guess you could say, you know, it's good to be part of something like this. Uh, but the market, or Facebook opened up, traded down. Remember, $38, that was, that was the offering price. Look at where the point of control is. Look at the amount of volume at $38. It came here, traded here. If you're watching the order book, uh, I think at one point 34 million shares to be bought at 38 and then what happens that's a cheap shot buy and uh, place your stop right under there and sure enough what happens we get a pop back up to this uh, high volume level uh, a little bit of resistance right on the money that's where I took profits 39.95 came up touched it and uh, you know got out from there and it you know it continued to go higher but whatever I'm not really concerned about it but I, I just glad I got you know to make a trade on Facebook it gave me an opportunity and I made money on it and that's kinda how I see it um, so just kinda going from there uh, just to point out because I'm curious uh, Apple uh, opened up at the lows traded up above 540 and started to reverse um, curious on a daily chart what it looks like we have a, you know, I think this is a dragonfly doji is what it's called candlestick-wise, but I don't really care. Um, just, you know, increasing volume on sellers. Momentum's definitely to the downside. We really don't, you know, volume really chops off at, at 495 or so. 
So that could be your potential low. And then from there, if we break through that, uh, down to 450 and then potentially 430. Uh, and I, I don't think you take that off your radar. So anyways, uh, that's really all I have to say. Expect to bounce. You know, right now we're getting it in gold and silver. That's the easiest way to play it for right now. Um, hopefully you caught it at the lows. Uh, I, I thought it was a pretty, a pretty easy trade. Um, but if not, you know, just realize that you're buying, you'd be buying Three day, two days, three days off the lows. So, uh, really, that's all I have to say. Good night.